Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will tell you about a drama, horror, sci-fi movie from 2017 titled Cargo. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Andy and Kay live on a houseboat in rural Australia with their one-year-old daughter, Rosie. The Earth has been hit with a virus that turns the infected into zombies over a 48-hour period. Kay tells Andy that they are quickly running out of food rations and thinks they should go ashore in search of supplies. Andy disagrees, however, arguing that it's too dangerous unless they reach a point of absolute necessity. Thumi, a young Aboriginal girl, sits on the ground attaching leaves to her shoes. She takes a rabbit carcass to the edge of a ditch, and whistles loudly. She then throws the rabbit into the ditch before covering her ears, as a loud gargling sound is heard. Later that day, Andy spots an abandoned sailboat and goes to investigate. The boat has taken on some water, but Andy finds food and other supplies, including a bottle of wine. As he gathers things from the boat, Andy hears a noise coming from the boat's restroom. He grabs a few final items and leaves quickly with the box in hand. Andy returns home, excited to tell Kay what he found. She looks through the items, unwrapping the bottle of wine, and Andy lays down to take a nap with Rosie. Still concerned about their food situation, Kay decides to travel back to the sailboat, in the hopes of finding more supplies. Unaware of the sounds Andy had heard earlier, a zombie emerges from the room and bites Kay. Rosie begins to cry, which wakes Andy, and after tending to the baby he calls out for Kay. Kay has locked herself in their bathroom and refuses to open the door. Andy convinces Kay to let him in and finds her tending to the wound on her knee. Kay then opens an emergency kit and puts on the white bracelet inside. The bracelet is a digital timer, automatically set to count down from 48 hours, to track the infected person's remaining time. The kit also contains an injection that neutralizes the brain, so that no pain is felt while transitioning. Andy and Kay then discuss what to do next, and they agree to go ashore to look for medical assistance. Andy and Kay find a vehicle, and Andy begins filling the gas tank. They avoid one zombie, and another is seen struggling to lift its head from the ground. Because Kay is still bleeding, the virus is faster to take effect. Andy makes a stop to look at the map, and Kay collapses, convulsing and vomiting blood. Elsewhere, Thumi throws a snake carcass into the pit, but this time nothing is hurt. She goes down to take a closer look, but exits quickly right after. Now back on the road, Kay wakes up and finds her wound oozing a yellow slime. Now panicking at how fast she is transitioning, Kay tells Andy she no longer wants to go to the hospital. Kay then opens the door and tries to jump out of the moving vehicle, forcing Andy to pull over. She argues that it's an unnecessary risk for him and Rosie, as it's almost certain that the hospital can't help her. Andy does not want to give up hope, which only incenses Kay further, as she says it's her decision to make. Nevertheless, he still can't bring himself to leave her. Andy forces Kay back into the vehicle and breaks off the door handle to prevent her from opening it again. They continue driving but are surprised by a man standing in the middle of the road. Andy swerves to avoid him and ends up running into a nearby tree. Andy checks on Rosie, who is still safely secured in the back seat, however, Kay was impaled in the collision. Seeing this, Andy passes out from shock. Later, Andy wakes up and turns to wake Kay, but she has already turned. Her eyes and mouth covered in pus, Kay suddenly sits up and bites Andy's arm. Andy takes Rosie from the car and sets her a safe distance away, before returning. He then injects Kay with the numbing agent, and removes her bracelet, which he places on his own wrist. Now infected, Andy continues traveling on foot, with Rosie on his back. Rosie begins to cry as Andy stops to rest. Unable to comfort her, he sprays Kay's perfume, and the scent calms Rosie down. Andy then spots the man that caused their crash, but realizes he is a zombie and prepares to defend himself. Before he can do so, Thumi shows up and tells Andy not to hurt her father. She cuts her hand with a rock and uses the blood to lead the zombie away. Andy continues on and reaches the nearest town, at nightfall. He then meets Etta, a former school teacher, who sees his wound and asks him how much time he has. Andy says approximately 46 hours, so Etta tells him to sit and administers first aid. Etta explains that most of the Aboriginal people have left, including her former students. Andy sees some of their fires in the distance, and Etta goes on to say that the fires are Aboriginal hunting parties that are cleansing the land of the zombies, and advises Andy to steer clear of them. Later that night, the infection begins to progress, and Andy has his first seizure. The next morning, Andy wakes up and maps out his next destination. He hopes to make it to a military base, where he can find safe haven for Rosie. 
Along the way, they pass several zombies with their heads buried in the ground. Andy hurries past them but does not notice when one of them gets up and begins following him. He comes across a truck and prepares to take it, but Vic calls out to him while aiming his rifle. Vic fires a shot, stopping the zombie that was following Andy and Rosie. Vic is trapped underneath one of the tanks, and after making Andy promise to help free him, he tosses Andy the keys. Andy frees Vic from the ditch, and Vic calls Andy a good man before driving him back to where he lives. Vic lives at a former gas refinery, and he introduces Andy to his wife Lorraine. After some time settling in, Vic asks Andy to leave his daughter with Lorraine, and come help him with some work. The two men head out, and Andy notes that he has 27 hours remaining before pulling his shirt down to hide his bracelet. Vic's work is shooting groups of zombies and collecting their belongings. He believes that they will still hold value when the world eventually returns to normalcy. Vic gives Andy a quick lesson on how to shoot a rifle, however, Andy is troubled to find that Vic imprisons live humans to lure the zombies. He approaches the cage and sees Thumi trapped inside. Vic and Andy then travel to a second cage which houses an aboriginal man. Vic berates him, saying that the man trespassed on his oil wells, before using animal entrails and blood to attract more zombies to the cage. Andy clearly does not agree with Vic's actions, but he hesitates to do anything as his daughter is with Vic's wife. The men return home and Andy plays with Rosie for a bit, when his hand starts to spasm. He walks outside and considers using the injection on himself, but changes his mind. Lorraine then approaches him and tells him that Vic is not really her husband. She explains that Vic let a group of gas plant workers die, including her husband, to save himself. Lorraine goes on to say that she knows Andy is carrying the virus and needs someone to take Rosie, but that she doesn't want to stay with Vic. Vic gets suspicious and interrupts their conversation. He knocks Andy unconscious and throws him in one of the cages. Andy regains consciousness and finds himself chained to Thumi. They agree that they have no choice but to help each other and begin to discuss a plan. Andy decides to tie the animal entrails together and throw them into the nearby field. That will allow them to use the combined strength of the ghosts, which is what Thumi calls the zombies, they can force the cage door open and escape. The plan works, allowing Andy and Thumi to reunite with Lorraine and Rosie. Andy grabs the keys before leaving, but they don't make it far before Vic wakes up and emerges with his rifle. As Vic goes to fire, Lorraine sacrifices herself and Vic ends up shooting her. Realizing what he had just done, Vic sets his rifle down to attend to Lorraine, allowing the others to escape. After removing their chains and hiding from Vic, Andy and Thumi fall asleep. Shortly after, Thumi wakes up to heavy breathing and finds Andy in a trance-like state, licking blood off the stone. The next morning, Andy returns to normal, and they continue walking together. Thumi stops at a tree where she finds her father's jacket hanging from a branch. She then sees her father's body and realizes he has died. Blaming herself, Thumi sits on the ground and starts hitting herself with a rock. Andy tries to comfort her, telling her that it's not her fault, but she lashes out at him. She says that she should have been with her father, and that she doesn't care about Andy, or his daughter. Andy says that she doesn't mean that, before walking off with Rosie. Andy stops to check his bracelet and sees nine hours remaining. Still uncertain what to do with Rosie, he begins breaking down again. Andy starts hyperventilating and uses his hands to dig at the ground. Thumi then hears Rosie's cries in the distance. Andy wakes up on the ground, without Rosie. He finds Thumi holding her, and they set off towards the river together. They find a boat and travel back towards the campground. Andy hopes to locate the family he had seen there a few days ago and ask them to care for Rosie. They find the family's RV which appears to still be occupied, fresh food still on the table. Thumi takes a bite of the cake and Andy searches the immediate area. Andy discovers the family working nearby and approaches the father. He tells Andy that he's welcome to take the car and the RV, but Andy says that's not what he came for. Andy then sees that the father is wearing the same white bracelet. He takes out his revolver and tells Andy that it contains six bullets, after he uses it, and he can have the final two. Andy declines the offer and walks away, hearing three shots shortly after. The father runs after Andy before using the fourth shot, and Andy retrieves the gun. Andy sits down holding the firearm and thinks about following suit. He stops after hearing Thumi and his daughter and she hands Rosie to him. Thumi then sits down and asks Andy if he wants her people, to which he replies that he does. She then applies some of the white paint to Rosie's face, saying that it masks their scent from the ghosts. They walk through a train tunnel and see several ghosts sleeping face first against the wall. They walk through quietly but find Vic on the opposite end. They duck behind a parked train, 
However, Vic hears Rosie and approaches to look for them. Thumi takes Rosie and hides inside the train car, and Andy distracts Vic before hiding amongst the other ghosts. They get into a fight and Vic overpowers Andy before returning to the train. Vic pulls Thumi from the train car, causing her head to hit the rail, then picks up Rosie and cradles her in his arms. Andy gets up and checks on Thumi, who is injured but still conscious. He then approaches Vic, who blames Andy for Lorraine's death. Eventually, a tearful Vic returns Rosie to her father, and Thumi is able to continue their trek. They travel a bit further before Andy's condition worsens. He picks up a piece of decayed meat and tells Thumi that it's time. Thumi promises to take care of Rosie, and Andy bids his daughter farewell before placing a guard into his mouth. He wraps the meat around a stick and binds his own wrists before yielding to the virus. The aboriginal warriors are finishing their raid when they hear a whistle in the distance. Thumi's mother then turns and sees her daughter approaching. Thumi and Rosie are being carried by Andy, and he's led by the meat on the stick. One of the warriors goes to finish Andy with his spear, but Thumi stops him. She sprays Kay's perfume for him one final time, and grabs his hand as the scent seems to provide him closure. Thumi then nods to the warrior, and he ends Andy's suffering. Thumi's people travel to a refuge where they are warmly welcomed. Thumi's mother looks at Rosie, and sees that Andy had written the words thank you on her stomach. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to see more.